Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we're continuing on with our team of the year. We've got Paul join us today and Stephen. And we're going to continue on this time with our centre halves. We're going to choose both positions. Uh, we'll kick things off anyway. We're starting with uh, the two players that were actually picked, which was uh, Gary Cahill. 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 And <laughs> David Luiz. Um, what do you think of the actual picks, guys? Paul? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Table doesn't lie. I mean, Chelsea are top of the league. You know, they've both been fantastic. I think, I personally think that Louise is better in a three than he is a two. I think that's why he's come on so well this year compared to his first time at Chelsea. Yeah. But yeah, I think so far, you know, you can't really argue with them. Yeah, Steve? Um, I think they're both, they're both strong picks, but I think if you're looking at that back three and looking at that Chelsea back three from this season, I think Aspilicueta probably deserves more of a mention than the other two. I think you can plug in Kurt Zuma, maybe even John Terry into that back three and they still work instead of Luis and for sure Cahill but I think without Aspilicueta it doesn't really work as much he kind of gives them that different sort of player the player he can cover in behind with his pace yeah. he can step out he can kind of move wide when you need him to he gives you more of a variety of it and uh, I, they're, they've both had really good seasons but I just think Aspilicueta has been marginally better than them and you look at it even Aspilicueta yeah. has won more than two headers a game this season yeah. and he's 5'8 so he gives them a little bit of everything as a central defender and it's just a general footballer. Yeah. Okay, what about you then? Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with Louise. I think, in well, my opinion, Louise had took a took a big risk going back to Chelsea. They always say you never go back. Um, after getting out of there and going to PSG and looking like Calamity in the Premier League and not knowing where to play, I think he's came back in and he's shored up that Chelsea team in the back. Again, Ask Laquetta does deserve a mention. Um, yeah. Stepping in from a left full in and he's played the whole way across that Chelsea back line so he has been a solid performer for them. Um, I wouldn't too much agree with Kale or Cal or whatever you want to call him <laughs> at this stage. But I, I I'll stick to Cal. You just can uh, stick to Cal. Yeah. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't be my pick now and there. He has popped up with some important goals, but yeah, um, he wouldn't be my my main pick well, now. Statistically, he is actually the best. He's got the most goals, the most uh, t uh, tackle success, and he's got the or out of the three, out of Aspilicueta, David Luiz, and himself. So. Yeah. It, it, you don't really, you don't really notice it. Actually, check the stats, but uh, personally, I, 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 wouldn't have had him in before I kind of checked that. Yeah. But statistically, you kind of have to have him in there. Yeah, well, he's popped up a bit goals from him, like in terms of the like, he scored there a couple of weeks ago against Everton. He scored the week before. Mm. Uh, I can't remember who they were playing against, but the winner. Yeah, yeah, he does. But yeah, he's, but a, he's, I, he's come back as a leader. He was a calamity, and he's come back as a leader. Yeah, that's the thing. Today, he was the best. English defender yeah. in the country at the moment. Like, yeah. There's no one else. I mean, John Stones was meant to be, but I mean, he's had a disaster no, he's, season. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. And yeah, as far as like, if I was to pick David Luiz, it'd be more. I was talking to a few Chelsea fans, and they said that like when he's in a back four, he wanders. So yeah, like they, does, with, the, yeah. with the back three, he actually tends <clears> to uh, to have the license to kind of get forward, and he'll make those fifty yard passes uh, and. Uh, it, it leaves Cahill and Asper the Quetta to actually make the, do the defending for him and he doesn't really he's kind of like a, almost like an extra midfielder but he's not exactly like given that title yeah. yeah he kind of takes over that kind of quarterback role for yeah. Chelsea he yeah. drops the deepest of the three central defenders a lot of the time which you wouldn't expect him you'd expect him to be the one who steps out into midfield mm. a lot but you see a lot especially in their bigger games and they've won he's actually played the deepest of the three mm. when the ball goes in behind or he's the option for everyone to turn back yeah. and get it instead of playing it all yeah. the way back to Courtois so he's kind of the player who can then as you say spread it out with 50 yard passes or 10 yard passes and his distribution of the ball is really good as well yeah, so exactly. he, suits yeah. be, he suits being a central the central central defender he's in the modern back three he's definitely improved because I mean, a couple of years ago at Old Trafford we played Chelsea when he was in a back, to in a back two yeah and Hernandez just gave him the run around for the whole game. I mean, he was in midfield, he was a striker at point, you know, he was playing everywhere. Yeah. And just gave him the run around. I think Gary Neville said it was like watching someone control him by a PlayStation. He was just this, all over the yeah. show. You know? This is Luis. Yeah, Luis. Yeah, but did yeah. you watch Lukaku bullied him? Yeah. Like, I know they won't train but Lukaku yeah, bullied Lukaku, him for yeah, the majority was, of the game. Yeah. Um, he was going down. That's kind of showed his weakness defensively. I think, yeah. as a defender, but I tell you what, if you put him as like a defensive midfielder, kind of just in front, I think he'd he be, did play uh, there just before he left. Yeah, he, he did, and he, he, he did didn't all do right. that bad. No, but uh, as well, he takes free kicks and penalties. Yeah. Sorry, I think, free kicks, but, I think teams do target. I think teams do target Luis as, as a weak point. At they know, yeah. they know. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I think he's. I think this year he's. He's yeah, definitely had, improved. Has some frailties definitely. this year, but he's definitely improved massively. Yeah, to go back and and try win that and to win that league, but look at things now. 
It's a big, a big mm. feat. Yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll move on to. Uh, I think Alder where Alder deserves a mention. I I personally I think he's class. And oh. since, since he's like came to Spurs, he was he was daily at Southampton, but when he went to Spurs, he just yeah went to a new level. Pochettino seems to love him. And uh, he he seems to ha- he has the best tackle success rate in the Premier League. Yeah, there's a thing with him over the last it's over the last seven seasons. This will be the eighth season in the team that he's played in. They've had five five of the last seven. He's been in the best defense in the league, and uh, the other two the other two he was in the sec- second mm. best team in the league. He's picked up two yellow cards in the last two seasons, and possibly three. Like he's yeah. there's discipline and and the way he shares up with the fans. It's just, it's talking. He's I think he'd be in there with Louise for me anyway. He's modern, what, what? He's modern day. Center back for me, and yeah. I mean that in a good sense. Yeah. It's just so smooth. It, nothing's. It's so simple. Everything's just so simple and easy with him. You yeah, know? where you have stones overcomplicating yeah, exactly. everything. Like yeah, the, yeah no. Completely. And what about with the uh, with like with him and Vertonghen together? Do you think they're really good as a partnership, or is the one better well, than the other? Well, they, they, well, I think Alvarez is the leader there, but I think like Vertonghen and him have played. In the Belgian national side together, they don't even play centre half together in the Belgian national side. Yeah, though. one's a fullback. But you've got both of yeah. them play fullback sometimes. Oh yeah, left hand. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. mad. Um, and you've been playing club level together. They play the Ajax together, so they just have a great reading of each other. I think Vertonghen went missing for a season with Spurs. He wanted out of there, and then they brought in the the, the Belgians, and he kind of picked up again. But the Isle of Earl is definitely the driving force in that that defence, and Vertonghen is a, a bit quieter and a bit more timid. And um, but he has had a great season as well. Mentioning him. Um, yeah. you know, best defence in the Premier League so it has to be it does stand by them unless they capitulate again against Newcastle at the end of the season <laughs> and throw that away but yeah. fingers as far crossed. as uh, your rivals Arsenal I have to say Koscielny himself uh, I know Arsenal has a dreadful uh, season but he himself hasn't had a bad season like when you can see uh, we were speaking about before about like that game in the Champions League against Bayern or both games Yeah. as soon as he was out well like for the what 70 minutes he was on the pitch between the two games he actually won the Tied two one, yeah. so yeah. it shows how much Arsenal miss him, and he's got eighty seven interceptions this season. Yeah, in just our thirty one appearances, so that's a crazy amount of interceptions for any defender. That's the most yeah. of any yeah. defender. Yeah, he's, he's a top defender. And that's Definitely. what you look at as you mentioned Alderweireld there. Alderweireld's only got twenty one, so I doubt Alderweireld's in the best defense in the league. But I think Koscielny maybe stands out a little bit more because he's not in as strong a defense yeah. by any means. Hector Bellerin's gone missing for the entire year. That's well, after are. Christmas. He got run up. I thought he, he was, was up, up until yeah. Christmas, he was decent. He I, don't really feel, I don't really feel... I really don't think... Did he grew that ridiculous he, barn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's quite... I actually think... The, I know it's full-backs, but Bellerin's quite suspect defensively. I know I he's great going yeah. forward, and I think Monreal's great going forward as well, but I think defensively, both full-backs are very suspect. Arsenal don't have a great defensive midfielder. So a lot of that... A lot of it comes back onto Mustafi and Koscielny... And they have a lot to deal with when they're yeah. playing in the two. So I think he's been absolutely exceptional to get Arsenal to even close to where they are. This yeah, and year. he's only 1% less than uh, Aldo RL for his uh, tackle success. So yeah. he's at 88 and Aldo RL's uh, 89. But uh, I, I want to give Ashley Williams a mention. Because since he's came in, I have to give I have to give him a mention. <laughs> because since the, if you look at Everton last year to this year, and since he's came in, he's completely showed up to the fence. And, you know, Funes, Mori, Jagielka has only came good kind of in the last six games again like yeah. I was, I'm delighted that he has but I wouldn't I wouldn't put him there because Williams plays the majority of the season and we did keep a lot of clean sheets just after Christmas there coming in coming into 2017 and I just want I just think since he's came in he's made a massive difference to our defence yeah. and I don't think he'll stay around for long at all but for this season just for that alone I'm uh, I'm putting him out there, but he's not my pick. He only has I'm a year or two left in him. Though, no, he's, 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 he's thirty-three. 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 Thirty-four. Yeah. He's, like, he's made the most of his career. I mean, he was Swansea for. Yeah. yeah. Swansea yeah. for a few years. Yeah. He's made he float, the most of his career. He I mean. floated around the lower leagues in England for most of his yeah. career. Like he only really came to prominence with Swansea. He's, but yeah, I think he's given Everton. Same for Swansea though. Yeah, yeah, he was, and I think he's given Everton the leader they've needed at the back as well. Yeah. I think for all. And he's lacked for for a number of years since Martinez come in. For all Jagielka's qualities as a footballer and as a central defender, he's not, for me, the most either. natural of no. leaders. Or yeah, no. Even though he's the captain, he's, he's yeah. not much of a talker at all. Like, And Everton fans complain because, you know, you want your captain going up and getting in the referee's face. Jagielka doesn't do that, whereas Williams will. Yeah. And Williams yeah. is not afraid to go mad at yeah. players. Like, look at him against for Lukaku against United. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to go and say, listen, you know, yeah. do your job, bro. Hold the ball up for us. Happy to go away, give the penalty, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, scored the first. As far as uh, no, Jackie Elke did. I guess I guess right. Yeah. No. Um, as far as uh, other centre backs, Michael Keane. Michael Keane, I think he, individually, I think yeah, he has been very, very good. But he seems to be the talk of everybody for this transfer. So put it this way, United have a buyback clause, and I'm hoping Jose takes loves that. One, he I think he's fantastic. Yeah. I think he's one of the best for me. One of the best in the league. I think he's brilliant. He's so he's, young as well, like for a centre back. Yeah, 24. Yeah, I mean, like so. he's still coming into his prime. I think mm. he's looked exceptional for Burnley this season when they've kind of done well in games. So when they've won at home and stuff, he's looked brilliant. Mm. He has looked shaky a couple of times when they've conceded a couple of goals and everything like that. And I think he can be suspect positioning-wise, especially from crosses. But overall, I think there's a central defender you can really mould into a top defender there. And as you say, United, I think, will take him back in the summer. There's so. rumours in the papers that Liverpool might sign him. I think Jose Mourinho would pay the money. I don't think he's going to go to Liverpool. I think it's only £15 million as well. I mean, that's yeah. nothing in today's market. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely nothing. Compared well, to well, 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 like, okay, so you put Man United. Where does that leave Bailey, Small, and I think it's Keane and Bailey. I think I think we Bailey for me in terms of I'm looking at the past United players. If you want to say the best partnership United ever had would probably be Vidic and Ferdinand. You probably agree. In the modern, yeah, in the modern, modern area, yeah. And if you always had that hard man and you always had I a player who could play football, <laughs> two of them together were better than. And I think if you had oh, Bailey yeah. and Keane, I think. And then you have a left back beside him. I think you know, you can go forward, I would give Rolo really an honourable mention there now. Yeah. I, he's been, he's been, he's been muck up this year. Rolo was every time I've watched he United, he's been uh, well. He's done a job there this year with them. Yeah, I know they've been drawing nice. everything, but I, I, I think Rojo has actually been because I, I thought he was a donkey. Now, yeah, no, with Rojo, I think he, uh, he's plugged the hole for United now. He's still a donkey, like, but he's just not. I don't think he's world class, but I think he's done a job. I think he's filled in all right all the injuries that they've had like I, I just think he's very reckless I mean I do agree I, I love he's a good player and I think he's great he loves United so that, obviously I love that but I just think he's a red card away from just disaster he's like, <laughs> he's like the new Fellaini for me personally yeah he just goes for it like he's he just I mean against Everton for example I mean, he, you know, he should have been, been gone and then he should have been gone the following game <laughs> No, you can't do that in the Premier League. It's, yeah. it's dangerous, you know. But that's you're supposed to be a boy like that as well. But boy, he's actually good at reading yeah, the ball and wins exactly, it. Like, yeah. he hasn't played a lot of games this year, Bailey. Though he's had the injuries. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to him anyway because he's, uh, he's had his injuries. I mean, I, I I would definitely have Bailey ahead of Rojo. Oh, no, one hundred percent. I'm just saying he's just done a, done a good job. That's all. One hundred percent. I just uh, like him, right? Stan. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think a lot of United fans probably have Smalling in there, but I just don't rate him at all. Don't rate Smalling. I think Bailey's just as brought as. Like another level to the defenders mm. we have at the moment. Small is still handsy. He's, he's, I don't he's know how he's, I don't know how he doesn't give away so he's many penalties. So, so are we. Yeah, he's yeah not, so are we. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's not a good footballer. He's just not he's like that. I know that's so true because he's playing for Man United, but yeah. he's not. He's a defender. He just he, he's passing and everything. He's not. A good, he's a good defender, but not a good footballer. Yeah. And at Man United, you have to be a good footballer and a defender. He's he's. I've I've always said he's going to cause either in England the England team or in in the United yeah. team he's going to cause a big upset because on corners he's wrestling people. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. I don't know how he gets away with it all the time. I think with um, I think with Eric Bailly though he's given United what they haven't had since the Manu Vidic really, yeah. which is just a tower in defender who when balls come into the box or loads you know, of tackle play, yeah players are running yeah. through that he will just cream you yeah, if I agree. he gets half a chance man out. and ball yeah. <laughs> old skill style but that's it what is, I think though, United yeah. are missing I think we're missing not I think we're missing someone beside him who will just calm him down I, yeah. think, I think the yeah. only problem with and you mentioned Keane a minute ago as a player probably come back to United in the summer and maybe partner by you is both of them play on the right hand side of the fence mm. and yeah. have exclusively played on the right hand side of the fence and I don't think that's as easy a transition at the top level as you would think no, maybe. for one of them to move across it's I don't think Bo- across, yeah. I don't think Bailly's going to really move across I don't think he's got the football brain to move across I think he's more of an you know, an athletic defender who has got a good range of passing for a central defender, but at the same time looks very comfortable on the right. I wouldn't really want to move him mm. from there. So it's whether Keane is willing to adapt to play on the left hand side for United, which he may very well may be able to do. The top defenders can do it and can play both sides, but if he can't, then you're running into a problem where it probably is Marcos Rojo who continues at centre half yeah. with one of the other um, next yeah. season. Mourinho seems to like Rojo, so yeah. I mean, you know, Mourinho, Mourinho likes a player he sticks with him. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. So. And as far as uh, Liverpool are going to want to uh, mention, because they're up, up and around the top four spot, in fairness. But uh, Matip came in this season, and I felt like at the start of the season they weren't really, they weren't doing too bad defensively, like compared to last season. And I just I think he's been a very good signing for them. And if they can add to 
as much as I don't really want to see them do well. But I think if they if they get another defender to complement them, uh, I think they'll yeah. do well next year. I think Matip's had quite a good. And Klopp's first pretty, pretty season, good at like, Klopp's pretty good at yeah. uh, plucking uh, players. Especially to perform Germany, for him. Like, mm. You look at Jal Matip coming out, you know, for free from Hamburg yeah, on a free, free yeah. which is, not Schalke or Schalke on a free, yeah. yeah. Um, was he for about four million? Free. No, no, free. free. Well, uh, Bosman. Yeah, yeah Bosman yeah. transfer. Right. But I think him and Lovren, when they've played together, have actually looked quite decent. They've quite a good understanding of each other. Now, whether that's down to the fact that Liverpool's other defensive options are so bad that they just look good together. <laughs> and the both of them, Matip doesn't speak much English yet. And Dejan Lovren spent most Speaks of his childhood in German, though. Yeah, yeah, Lovren spent most of his childhood in Germany, so he's fluent in German. Yeah, but he's got Emery Chan so, there playing beside him, too. Who's well, Chan, German, yeah, too. but Chan's playing in front of him rather than alongside yeah. him. I think it's important with your central defensive partner. It's kind of. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you How mean. How would Liverpool fans say that they, they think this is the best partnership they've had since Carrie Yeah. And I mean, that's, I mean they haven't had a great defense. But you got to remember yeah. that Lovren was, was not a bad player. He just. he. I think he crumbled a bit under pressure by playing for Liverpool at the time. Yeah. I don't think the fans kind of really warmed to him at the start. You, yeah. you know, if you make a couple of mistakes when you go into club, that size, um, the fans are going to get in your back if you're making yeah. too many mistakes. And, and I don't think he really recovered from it. That's what they said though with his contract. Klopp was out saying during the week, he asked some Liverpool fans, they say, get rid of him. And he asked some after that Dortmund game last year and they have signed him up for 20 years. They, yeah. they, they, they're just it, it's I don't know he just has a weird balance well, with it. It kind of speaks volumes. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's been Sacco yeah. and Sacco's yeah. been brilliant Sacco's since been he's been gone away. Uh, Sacco turned up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sacco turned up late for training and late for that tour, and then he raced, roasted. Did you see that video last year on the the American tour? And he roasts Klopp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, I, I never so, see. Yeah. That's, 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 that's the, the, thing. That was the end don't, don't cross the boss. No. Yeah. Um, as far as Matt, Matt up as well had the, the disruption of the African Cup of Nations because he, he refused to play for Cameroon and yeah. he was banned for yeah. four or five games which was the start of Liverpool's downfall or their little slip in the season as well so yeah, yeah. the loss of Matip and Mane kind of yeah. killed Liverpool killed any faint title hopes they might have had and has put them <laughs> in um, has put them in just a race to the top four now and I think Matip yeah. is, Matip especially at the back, whatever about Mane and them stopping scoring goals or creating chances, yeah. but they conceded a lot more goals. I think the biggest problem inside. with Klopp's teams is he doesn't. Klopp's never concentrate on defense. It's kind of you score three, let's go four. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of why you know why Matip has done well because his stats are quite good considering that's yeah. the type yeah. of manager he's playing under. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, well he's, he's trying to like he's trying to Klopp has always tried to his defenders have maybe been decent footballers and quite quick rather than a defender. natural central yeah. defender because they press so high up the pitch mm. that the whole team pushes forward, it becomes very tight, there's a lot of space in behind. So it's more important maybe to have two quick central defenders than two widely all veteran central defenders. Yeah. The other thing I know there is to find that, balance. that we mentioned in the last one is they've had James Milner playing left back for the whole season as well, Yeah, yeah. which yeah. isn't really ideal, his yeah. legs are getting on. And Oh, Tino, 31, 32. Well, uh, yeah. Let's stop talking about them anyway. Uh, <laughs> as far as uh, honourable mentions, I think uh, Van Dijk, if he had played more games, he only played yeah. 21 games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, very good player. I think he'd be bought by a big, bigger club this summer. City, 50 million, don't they? We'll wait and see. He's better than John Stones, so 80 million probably by City's terms. Yeah, exactly. Adam Mendy yeah. at 30, John Stones at 50. There's a, yeah. an well, awkward spoiler well, um, there. And, you know... I just you just wonder how how well City would have done had Vincent Company been playing the whole season. He's just yeah, like he yeah. came back in. He's just been so good. I think you could argue that on his day he probably is the best centre. Just back scored in the a screamer on the weekend yeah. as well. Yeah, I think, I think he's been scoring a few. Yeah. Yeah. You look at any any time they've won, they've, he's always had a season when he's fully fit. But yeah, he he's, the when they, when he's not fit, they don't win the league. That's simple. Well, I, I look at him. And the way he just he celebrates goals, the way he conducts himself, that's what mm. you want. You want your captain, your centre half to be. It's he like leads. him. And you look when he scores, uh, he scored a goal, and not the one he scored recently, the one before uh, where he'd been out for injury for so long, he scored that goal, and you could just see how much it meant to him when he's yeah. running off celebrating and all, and he loves it. Yeah. And he's very good with the fans and stuff like that as well. Like, he's just, he's a very good role model, and that's the way I would want my centre half to be at. I think, is he is he coming towards the end of his contract? And he's got, one year left, he's got one year left after this yeah. year. So. I just don't like him because he brought me heart. Yeah. He only scored that goal. Yeah, he had a problem. Well, uh, another one I'd mentioned. No, I thought you were going to say Aguero. No, no. We'll leave that for another day. Another one I'd mentioned down towards the, to, towards the bottom of the league is have you watched Alfie Mawson off, off Swansea? He's popped yeah, up he, at six, six yeah, goals or yeah, so. Yeah, he's he's uh, done all right against Everton there. I know with Mawson. Against Lukaku, he actually kept Lukaku very quiet on Sunday. 
Look. I know with Moss and obviously Saturday. with the jersey I'm wearing as well. Like Moss played for Wickham a couple of years ago yeah. in League Two, same league as Portsmouth that season. And he's a really, really exceptional talent. But I think in the Premier League this year, apart from the goals and stuff, looks especially the first half of the season, he can be quite suspect yeah. in terms of going back. He's very good in the air and he's very good on the ball. But when you turn him, he can be a little bit leaky at times. He still has a lot to learn. He's still only 22. Yeah. So he's still a young defender and he's got a lot of promise. Right. But if you turn him... It, you're asking for trouble with him because mm. he's very reckless. Yeah. He's very raw, like in terms of how reckless he can be. Yeah. One that I wanted to mention as well is Gareth McCauley from West Brom. He's got six yeah. goals yeah. this season. And not just well. not just six goals. Those six goals have attributed seven points for them, and without those seven points, they're mm. in sixteenth with Crystal Palace, yeah. which means they'd still be in a relegation fight going into this weekend. With two games to go, well. and otherwise they're eighth on the table. This is Sky Sports need to get you working. Yeah. For <laughs> um, but with those goals, like he's vital to. West Brom, people look at West Brom and go, yeah, they've no. tailed off a little bit this second half of the season and they're not a good form. Y'all know Peelers doesn't do anything after He's 40 points. He's a Tony Peelers player. Yeah, that's it. on holiday. Yeah. But up to that point, he had kind of kept them... They were, they were, they were trailing Everton for, for yeah. that seventh spot. They've been eighth. Fairly. They've been eighth the entire season. Yeah. From week one to now, they have not left eighth position. For he the sums up Tony Peelers so. for me, guys. Yeah. He's yeah. such a Tony Peelers player. Yeah. Honest and you know, doesn't put a foot wrong. Well, Tony, yeah. Tony Peel has got team eighth in the Premier League with four central defenders exactly. back in yeah. 2017. Like, exactly. he's a genius. In I rate way. Johnny Evans though, too. Like Johnny yeah, Evans has always been quality. I think, even as a United fan, you'd admit yeah, I thought he was, uh, he was, yeah, he was a fit. Okay, Johnny Evans you know, was. Yeah, I take him. I take him. He calms everything down. Like, yeah, I think that upset him a bit. But other than that, yeah, yeah he was, he's a good player. Like, I think you know, the players you would have had around the squad, I I'd much prefer him. Phil Jones and Chris Morning, so yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and um, what about Harry Maguire? Lads, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I'd like to yeah, see him at a bigger club. Maybe next season he'll, he'll get yeah, it. Um, and he's heavily with Tottenham as well, hasn't he? To kind of replace yeah. Kevin Vimmer as the third central well, defender we could do with him. on the bench. Well, uh, yeah, well, as far as that, and as well, and as well, like as speaking of like maybe next year doing well, it could be. With Clark and uh, Duffy coming up now, hopefully we'll see them do well. Yeah, and yeah. Hopefully this time next year we'll be talking about them in our, in our Premier League team. Yeah, right? Maybe, maybe or as a shortness. Like well, Stephen Ward, the other day he was in their top five. I think Duffy yeah. could be yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah, really I was fuming it. when Everton had him go. I think he's, uh, I think he's oh. a top class. And a half in terms of the Irish team as well, like we've gone from when the, so obviously the Keane and, and uh, Duff era died down, mm. then we kind of went into championship players again. But it's great to see we're starting to really yeah. get players pushed into the yeah, Premiership come again. Back, like Brady, I know, hasn't gone to plan so far. Burnley he will come to plan though, I think. The second half of the season, I think, with a full pre season with yeah. Dice and Dice gets to see what he's all about. Yeah. I think he'll kind of push on then and him and Hendrick being at the same club, being best mates, yeah. will obviously help yeah, to two of them. It's mad to think they played football together on the same road in Crumlin, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's well, great. well yeah. Um if you guys feel like we've missed anybody out there, uh feel free to let us know in the comments and uh, don't forget to vote by putting the name of your player in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.